Welcome to lecture one of our psychometrics course. So this lecture is the first of about 10 lectures this semester on topics in psychological testing and psychometrics. The purpose of this lecture is to get us familiar with some of the core concepts that we begin to think about when thinking about psychological testing and the relationship between things that we can observe and things that we can't observe. So to begin the lecture, I want us to think about what is the goal of psychological testing and more generally psychometrics. Well, that goal, I will argue, uh, is for us to be able to measure human behavior. After all, that's why we would think about giving a psychological test. It might be human behavior, it might be attitudes, it might be beliefs, anything that we can uh, somehow uh, ascertain from humans is going to be under the purview of psychometrics. Now, what exactly does that look like? Well, that looks like a quite complex picture because all we can really see about these humans that we're measuring is their observable behavior. So it might be things that we you know, can observe or measure, count, etc., about the things that they do, might be answers to a survey, uh, lots of different things that could fall into the category of observable behavior. And what we really want to do is make an inference b behind this observable behavior and say something about these latent or unobservable traits that we're trying to capture. So you think about something like emotion. You know, do you observe emotion or do you infer it from more concrete human behaviors? So this is, I put this as a question mark because that's the question. How do we infer from observable behavior to unobservable things like latent traits? Well, the answer is that we use mathematics, and particularly we use numbers, and in the context of psychological testing, these numbers usually represent scores on some instrument, be it a survey or a response time on a task. But the point is we use measurement to go from the observable behavior to something now that's very tangible, these numbers. And then we go backwards from the numbers and we infer something about the latent traits that requires us to use modeling. So I put these two things in red, measurement and modeling, because they are the core concepts that we'll be talking about all semester. Even though different lectures will focus on different specific topics, at their core will be the concepts of measurement and modeling. So I want to do our first example today of measurement and modeling and let's see how these kind of work in the context of psychological testing. So let's start. Uh, I'll just mention later we'll discuss properties of psychological tests in general, but for now let's just focus on some scores, right? You're all familiar with the, no with the notion of a psychological test and you're probably uh, familiar with the idea that you could get a score on this test. So let's just suppose that we have one of those. Let's suppose that you score a 32 on some test. I don't know what the test is, but I do want to know how did you do? Well, we can't answer that question unless we put that score on an appropriate scale. We need to know how well you did in reference to some other uh, concrete benchmark, right? So what I mean by this is that we need to transform this score of 32 to some appropriate scale. There are a lot of ways to do this. In this lecture, we're going to focus on one in particular. We're going to focus on the notion of percentile scales. So we're going to learn how to transform scores to percentiles. We're going to learn what that means and how to do the basic mathematics that allows us to do these transformations. So let's talk about percentiles. What is a percentile? Well, the definition is the following. The percentile rank of a trait value is the percentage of people in the reference group who have trait values less than or equal to that trait value. Okay, there's a lot of words there. I think this is a little more easy to understand if we consider an example. So let's suppose you have a situation where 75 out of 100 people have a math ability. So that's this trait that I'm interested in that's less than or equal to 17.3. Then that 17.3 equates to a percentile rank of 75. Why 75? Because it's 75 out of 100 is 75% of that group have that math ability that's less than that certain score. 
So we take this score of 17.3, I don't know what the scale is here, but I do know that that score is better than 75% of the people who take this scale. So the, the, the idea that I have a percentile rank of 75 tells me something about how well I'm doing compared to some reference group or norm group is what we usually call them. Okay. Now, um, that's easy enough. Why do we have to spend a whole lecture on percentiles? Well, the reason is because now we deal with the modeling aspect. How do these numbers represent these unobservable latent traits? So it brings to bear a technical issue that we have to consider. First of all, as I mentioned, trait values are unobservable. Okay, we can't directly measure them. We can only estimate them with the scores that we obtain. So how does that estimation work? Well, that estimation is something that we do modeling for. We say, okay, if we make some assumptions, then here's how we can go from observable scores to unobservable test values. So there are two assumptions that I want to introduce to you. And, and these are specific uh, to the way I'm presenting this material. This comes from some uh, classic texts in, uh, in psychometrics and psychological measurement. Uh, it's not universal, but it's the way I'm going to proceed in this lecture. So first, let's assume that any whole number test score we see represents a range of trait values. And specifically what that range is, is you take the score plus or minus 0.5. Okay, so again, this is just an assumption that I'm making, but that's what um, that's one of the assumptions that I'm going to make. I'll explain what this means in just a second. The second assumption is that we're also going to assume that every trait value in that range is equally likely to occur. So it's what's called a uniform distribution of trait values. Okay, how do these assumptions, uh, how do they work? Well, here's an example. Let's suppose that we have six people score a 17 on this scale. Okay, so what are the trait values that this represents? Does 17, you know, what, what unobservable trait is 17 representing? Well, by these assumptions, this score of 17 is going to represent a range of trait values less and more by a half, right? So the trait values that, that 17 is going to represent are between 16.5, right? That's 17 minus 0.5 and 17.5, which is 17 plus 0.5. So you notice here we go from single score to range of traits. Traits are on continuous ranges, whereas the scores might not be. The other assumption, assumption two, says that if you have your six people scoring this 17, then the trait values that those scores represent, half of them will be below 17, and half of them will be above 17. Even though everybody scored the same score, they have potentially different trait values. We'll just assume that half of them are on this side and half of them are on this side. So that's what we mean by uh, every, every trait value is equally likely. So what I wanna do is get into an example of how to compute percentiles using these ideas. So here's example one, let's get started. So here is a distribution of scores. And this is what's called a grouped distribution. So the way it is uh, presented is you have scores from zero to nine. There were three people that scored between zero and nine on some scale. And then 10 to 19, you've got two of them, et cetera. Okay, all the way up to scores between 50 and 59. And what we want to do is we want to compute the percentile rank for a trait value of 37, okay? So how do we do that? Well, let's work through what it is that percentile rank means and figure out how we can obtain that from the information that we have. Well, what we need to do is we need to find the number of scores, the number of people uh, who represent trait values that are less than or equal to 37. Remember, percentile rank is the percent of things that are less than or equal to a given number. So in this case, we need to find the number of scores which represent these trait values and then we need to calculate the percentage that this number represents out of the total number of scores, okay? So there's a lot of possible ways that you could go about doing this, but we're going to do it in a very systematic way using the modeling assumptions that we just made. So the first thing that we're going to do is you might notice that throughout here, we're asking about total number of scores less than a certain range. 
So that's something that's called cumulative frequency that I'm going to need to calculate for this table. So I'm going to work that out with you here just live. So I'm going to extend this table. So I'm given the scores and the frequencies, but I'm also going to calculate what's called the cumulative frequency. Now usually, I'll just say cumulative freak. Usually it's denoted C, capital C, little f for cumulative frequency, just so you know what that is when we see it later. And what it is, is we go from the bottom and we say, okay, how many people total have scored up to this point? If we start at the bottom, the cumulative frequency in the first category is just these three people, okay? So stay with me. When we go up to the next category between 10 and 19, we add on those two people in that range to get a cumulative frequency of five. What this means now is that five people scored in this range or below. Now, go up to the next category. We're gonna add on these 10 people that you see, right? Let's point to what I'm talking about. We're gonna add on these 10 people that you see, and that's gonna give me a cumulative frequency of 15. Then when I go up to the next category, I'm gonna add on the 17 people in the range 30 to 39. So that's gonna give me a cumulative frequency here of 32, 15 plus those 17. Keep going in this pattern. I'm going to add on this category, the 12 people who scored between 40 and 49. That's going to give me a cumulative frequency of 44. And then finally, I'm going to go up and add on the last category. Uh, there's six people in that, and if I add those six people here, I get a total cumulative frequency of 50. Now, this is going to do two things for us. First, you'll notice it's going to tell us that there are 50 people who took this test. Okay, so our percentile rank is going to be computed out of 50 people total. The other thing it's going to tell us is it's going to tell us how many people scored below certain ranges, and we're going to need that information. So we'll keep coming back to this table, but the first step is to calculate those cumulative frequencies. Now let's go on. Let's use that first assumption that we made about trait values. First, we'll note that the, the trait value of 37 falls in the score range 30 to 39, okay? Those are scores. What trait values do those represent? Well, remember, each score represents a range of trait values that's got a width of 0.5 on either side. So the score of 30 is going to be 29.5 to 30.5. And then 31 is going to be 30.5 to 31.5. The next score is going to have, so these are little intervals that are, um, that are basically stacking up so that we get an entire range of, of trait values between 29.5 on the low end all the way up to 39.5 on the high end. Okay. So this, this trait value of 37 falls in this range, which is going to represent this range of trait values. Okay. Now, why am I going to need that? Well, what that's going to let me do is it's going to let me say, okay, where does 37 fall in that range of trait values proportionally? And then I'm going to use that proportion to estimate what the frequency of people who score below that trait value is. Let me, ex let me explain what I mean. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a proportion table using those trait values. Okay, so the Proportion table will look like this. On the left-hand column, I'm going to write my trait values. Now, the range of trait values that I'm interested in is the range that that trait value of 37 falls into, which, as I just determined, was 29.5 up to 39.5. Now, here's the question. What cumulative frequencies do those trait values correspond to? In other words, how many people have trait values below 39.5? How many people have trait values below 29.5? And then I'll use that proportional uh, reasoning to figure out how many are in that uh, below 37. So we're going to have to go back to our table. And let's do that. So first, let's work on uh, the cumulative frequency associated with 39.5. So we want to know how many people have trait values less than 39.5. Well, these are going to be the people who scored less than 39. If we go back up to the table, we can see that 
in the score range 30 to 39, the upper end of that, there are 32 people total that scored below that score range. Okay, That's why we found the cumulative frequency. So we can put 32 as our cumulative frequency that's associated with that trait value. Okay. Let's do the same thing for 29.5. How many people have a trait value less than 29.5? Well, these are going to be the people who score less than 29, which is a total of 15 people. Okay. So you notice what we're doing is we're just taking these two cumulative frequencies right out of the table and we're just putting them down here in this proportion table. So that was 15. So now what do I have? Well, I don't know what this cumulative frequency is. That's the one I'm interested in finding out. But I can use some algebra to find it. That's all I've got to do. How does that work? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a proportional relationship. Okay? I know that this cumulative frequency, this number of people that correspond to a trait value of 37 or below, is between 15 and 32. Okay? I just don't know where it is in there. But I know by assumption, too, that the uh, distance between here and here is going to be proportional to the distance here to here relative to the whole distance of the range. Okay, So what do I mean by that? Well, let's write something down here. This distance, I don't know what it is, so I'm going to label that distance x. It's something positive because it's going to be something greater than 15. This total distance up to here, well, what is the distance between 15 and 32? Well, that distance is 17. Okay. Now let's do the same thing on the other side. The distance between here and here from 29.5 to 37, that is 7.5. Okay. The distance from here all the way up to the top is a distance of 10. Okay. So when I say let's set up a proportion table, what I really mean is let's figure out what this unknown cumulative frequency is by simply exploiting this proportional relationship. We're going to simply set up an, uh, an equation that expresses this proportional relationship. This distance 7.5 out of 10 is the same as this distance out of 17. In other words, 7.5 over 10 is equal to x over 17. Well, this is brilliant because now we've reduced this problem into simple algebra. Go back to, what, to when you used to know how to do algebra. To solve something like this, you're, you can do several things. One easy thing to do is simply cross multiply. Take 10 times x equals 7.5 times 17. And that's going to give you 10x equals 127.5. Okay. Now solve for x. Well, all you've got to do in this case is divide by 10 on both sides. And so if you divide 127.5 by 10, you're going to get x equals 12.75. That's awesome. That tells you that this distance here is 12.75. So let's add that to 15. That cumulative frequency that I unknown, that's unknown is going to be 15 plus that x, which is 15 plus 12.75, which is a total of 27. 0.75. My unknown cumulative frequency is now known. There are 27.75 people who have a trait value less than or equal to 37. Now remember, out of 50, right, that's what our total frequency is, that percentage is then just that 27.75 out of 50 times 100 to get it on a percent scale, which gives us a final answer of 55.5. This is the percentile rank. So real quickly, what we do, we simply use our modeling assumption to get trait values from scores. So we know that 37 is between these two trait values. And then we use assumption 2 to express uh, this unknown cumulative frequency as a proportional distance between these observed cumulative frequencies. And we use a little bit of algebra to figure it out. So this is kind of a model of how you can answer any question where you're asked to find the percentile rank of a given trait value. Now I do want to quickly uh, show a problem that works the other way. Okay, So instead of giving you a trait value and asking you the percentile, what if I give you the percentile and ask you to find the trait value? Well it works very similarly, it's just sort of backwards. Okay, 
So here, example two, we're going to find the trait value corresponding to the 70th percentile. Well, the 70th percentile, uh, let's, let's work on that. 70% of our 50 scores, that would be 35, right? So what trait, so what, what we're really asking here is what trait value has 35 scores at or below it, right? That's the definition of what the 70th percentile would be. This would be what trait value corresponds to having 35 scores at or below it, okay? So let's think about this a little bit. Let's, uh, hang on one second, back up. Let's go back up to the table. Here we go. So 35, uh, 35 is going to be somewhere, get my notes here over here as well. 35 is going to be somewhere as a cumulative frequency in between here and here. Right? So the score ranges and hence the trait values we're going to be dealing with are between here and here. Okay, so that's kind of where we're going to focus in on the table is where that 35 lies on the cumulative frequency side and then we'll do some inference on the uh, trait values side. So let's go back down to our problem and let's kind of think about this a little bit. First of all, from the table we just saw that we have 44 people who have a trait value below 49.5. That's because their upper score is 49, and if you add 0.5 to that, that's the maximum trait value that those 44 people could exhibit. And we also know that there are 32 people that are below 39.5, because again, 32 people correspond to a score range uh, below 39, which is a trait value below 39.5. So what this tells us, just as, we, uh, just as we saw in the table a second ago, is that this 35 corresponds to a trait value somewhere between 39.5 and 49.5. We just now need to figure out exactly where in that trait value range the 35 lies. Well, we can do it exactly like we just demonstrated using the proportion diagram. Okay? So I've gone ahead and set it up here. Uh, it looks just like before, we've got the traits on the left side, the cumulative frequencies on the right side. Uh, this time, the unknown is on the left side, you'll notice. Okay. So now, how do I find this unknown? Well, just like before, let's say that the distance between here and here is x. The total distance between here and here is 10 units. That's going to be the same ratio as the distance here, which is 3 out of the distance here, which is 12. Okay. So now I use x over, let me put my pointer again here, I use x over 10 equals 3 over 12. I just set that up as an equation. Okay. That sets up my proportion. Now I'm going to use cross multiplication. I'm going to say x times 12 or 12x equals 30. Now I just need to solve for x. Oops, I uh, got one a little too quick there. It's on this side. If I solve for x, I simply divide by 12, and 30 divided by 12 is 2.5. Okay. So that means that I'm going to add 2.5 to this bottom trait value. So my trait value is 39.5 plus that x, which is 39.5 plus 2.5, which is a trait value of 40. So what is the what trait value corresponds to the 35th or the uh, sorry 70th percentile? It's the one that has 35 out of 50 below it, which is 42. Okay. So that's what we do. That's how percentiles work. So in summary, let's finish this lecture up. First of all, percentiles can be computed for any test, so it makes them a really good thing to report. You may remember this from achievement testing or standardized testing that you took in school. Uh, you always got whatever the score was on whatever scale reported to you as a percentile. And that's why, because percentiles are pretty darn easy to interpret. They're simply the percentage of people who scored less than you. Now for us, the reason percentiles are important is this gives us a first example of computations that we can do without very much background that do require us to make some assumptions about the mapping between observable scores and unobservable traits. It may not seem like a big deal right now, and I'll promise you the point of this course is not doing percentiles all semester long, but it does give us some practice 
in doing some basic computations in this course, in this subject, while paying attention to these very important modeling assumptions, which is at the core of all uh, measurement and statistical things that you would do uh, in this context. So that's all for now. I look forward to seeing you in lecture two. And if you have any questions, always let me know. And I'll see you at the next lecture.